I'm Dmitry Sitkovetsky at the SalinRoyalAcademy.com and we're about to hear uh, Sophie Rechlin uh, and her wonderful uh, partner, Ejun. And so we're going to hear Beethoven, Sonata Number no. 8, which is Opus 30, Number 1. We'll start with the first movement.
good. Uh, now, this sonata, of course, out of 10, uh, is already, you know, having written big dramatic uh, pieces in the same opus, one of the biggest sonatas, C minor, just before. And then, of course, much later he wrote, not much later, but in a different place and for a different occasion he wrote the Kreutzer. So this is now sort of a, a lighter, lighter mood, Beethoven in his sort of not always as later on in his life in a much happier mood, yeah? So even somebody gave it a nickname, the Champagne Sonata. I don't know how much champagne he used to drink. He was a serious drinker at times, but I don't know whether champagne was his drink of choice. But anyway, probably because of that first gesture. What we need to keep in mind, of course, the question of contrasts in Beethoven is extremely important. For him, contrast even just between forte and fortissimo was a big event. For instance, you have that later on, uh, that fortissimo has to be absolutely uh, subito fortissimo. For him, there was always, I don't think there was a, any other composer, maybe not till Mahler, for whom fortissimo was such a huge event for him. Uh, for Beethoven especially. What he does, of course, he introduces a lot of less than a bar crescendo. That has to be not only <clears throat> the change of dynamic, but also the, the change of the quality of the sound. Totally unprepared, sudden, uh, beautiful lyrical melody. Sometimes I feel that maybe some of your strokes could be uh, more defined. Yeah, the attacker. Uh, yeah, that should be. You know, he establishes that right in the one, two, three, fourth bar. Pram. That is a very important key to this element, yeah? And sometimes that sforzando is not only bow arm, but also subito vibrato. It's kind of a little bit theatrical, yeah? In a good sense. Then, so every sforzando should be just full of, full of energy. And uh, in general, Beethoven uh, had more intensity in each bar, in each accent, than probably any other composer who, who we know. You know, there was always tremendous in the tension in his music, even in the upbeat movement like that. So there's always so what we need is piano here, but certainly forte here. Full of contrast, sort of, you know, the fireworks. Yeah. So try try it one more time. I'll stop you, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me stop you for a second. What do you think? Because it's in parenthesis. Uh, you have to make a decision where tarariram, where the forte starts there or on the downbeat. I think before. Before. So then you have to make it very clear. Because the difference between your piano at the beginning and then the same thing in forte should be greater somehow. And then, then immediately for drum. But I think the dynamic range 
could be could be greater. Let's try it. Yes, very good. Except now in piano it would be difficult to to hear you because maybe it's too small. Uh, well, light with a little bit more air in your lungs. So just light. To it. Sometimes I do certain things on two strings, just uh, blah, 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 to, 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 to produce that. Maybe just uh, it's just an idea. You don't have to do it, but that first note has to be really, really strong. Uh, or, It's just just an idea. Now, uh, when you go, but uh, the but this one. It's almost Mozartian in terms of changes, sudden changes, because Mozart was the fastest changer of moods. That's why he's, he's so difficult to interpret, because his, his mind was immediately changing with no, no, Beethoven usually gave you a little more time, but not in this sonata, not in this moment. So it is Mozartian, or Haydn-esque, whichever, but in any case, it's, it's that sudden changes. Yeah, to, 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 to. As if it was already going, because you already heard the piano playing. Yeah, maybe from your to to to. Yeah, yes. Because he was often, you know, like in the last uh, movement, rustico, yeah, like a country fiddler. He loved that, you know. He 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 often went. I remember I was playing, I think, in Bratislava, which is very close to Vienna. You know, it's just an hour from Vienna, and apparently, that tune, beautiful tune, in the last movement, he heard in the village just outside of. Bratislava, which was at that point part of the Austro-Hungarian. So he was keen on picking, you know, country uh, style, which would be very, very... The only thing I would recommend still, prarata, prarata, papa, prarata, any possibility to create more tension. And those things, prarata, papa, pra, pra, pra. So they, they really speak. Those those uh, grace notes, yeah. Maybe porodi from there. Toriti, toriroro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'd like to hear. Uh... 
this, this should be a very prominent. Uh, So this one should be able to maybe a little bit bounce here, spiccato. Try to find that place in the in the middle of the ball. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Yeah, quite virtuoso, thank you. Yeah, uh, the same place. Roti Ah, yeah, yeah, one more time. to stay, no, do not anticipate that subito piano, make it a, look what he does, all of a sudden for two bars, and all of a sudden we're in the church, complete change of scenery, but very short, and then again, very Mozartian, because Mozart was always full, but then, you know, he changes the scenery, it's almost cinematic. Yeah, all of a sudden, boom, we see completely different. And, and that very important. And then, just when we sort of back into that beautiful cantilena, and then, those things it remain very, very important because that gives that, you know, special. It's never, Beethoven is hardly ever comfortable. He was a very uncomfortable human being to be around, you know, because he was, you know, progressing uh, deafness and that made him already, you know, and his character was very, very difficult. You know, people who were around him whether it was Goethe or, or the, all the aristocracy, they were always, you know, he was a liability, socially speaking, you know, because he was always, you know, saying what was on his mind. So in music, it's also, he takes no prisoners, no preparation, no, it's, if you feel comfortable playing Beethoven, something is wrong. <laughs> it's, you, you lose some of the intensity. It's always, you know, proving the point, you know, driving through. Yeah, so, uh, just after that wonderful pause. Maybe too little, sorry. Maybe too little, because at the end you have to project. Again, Maybe just light bulb, but more, but right? more air. Yeah, just from that phrase of yours from G. Giro. 